Aha! Thought you were still out in Johnson Valley. No way, Jose. It's cold and rainy out there. Yes, it is. I'm just getting a workout, so I don't have my hat on, but I may put it on. Yeah, it's cold today. Whew. Um, so, all that fun Jeep adventure got me stoked to get onto the JJ project. Jamie's Jeep. One of the things we discussed in the earlier vids was the stock steering on the M38A1 chassis and how the steering box is worn out as is so many old Jeep uh, steering boxes. Uh, Ian Liljabad's Jeep included. And can I just say Ian Liljabad? My Ian told me that I have been pronouncing Ian Lil Javad's name wrong. And actually, even then, we still are, because I guess the J is silent or something. Oh. But I apologize, other Ian. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely my East Coast and Jamie's Midwest <laughs> upbringing. Anyway, I just wanted to apologize Everybody publicly. calls me Ian Rouse also. Hey, no offense. <laughs> publicly own it. Well, while I'm here mauling these tie rods, why don't we take a little discussion on what I'm up to here. Got the engine out. Steering box on this was trash, so we got rid of that as well. Quick description of how the steering works on this unit. Uh, the only thing I could ever consider this thing being a match with is the uh, VW bus. See, it's got this link arm here. Steering box is back there, sort of like a Model A Ford. So it's a drag link proper front to back. So the pivot's there, right? And then this holds here and then it swings the tires to and fro. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of links, you know, it's, it definitely works. It's more proven, so it works. But once all this stuff wears out, a lot of folks have been putting the steering box from that location to up here, similar to what you'd see on, say, like a Chevy truck, the C10s and C whatever series. They have them mounted here and here. So, uh, and actually the later model Jeeps do too. So that's what I got, a later model Jeep steering box. This thing, nice, new, cheapy uh, repop. I mean, it's definitely not original equipment, but same design, uh, proper Pittman arm. And that bolts in from the side up here, wherever you think it's necessary. And I've watched a bunch of videos. Thank you, YouTube community. This is not new news whatsoever. This is just my first time doing it. What you want to be sure with the steering box is when you're turning your steering wheel to make a right turn, you're going this way, you're going to want this Pittman arm to be pushing that that way so it's making a right turn right so turning right this is moving that way turning left you get it backwards you're gonna steer backwards so there we are can you dig it yes all right so the thing with this unit is in all the Jeeps that I've seen the videos on, this cross member is in the way of the steering shaft. So you could put this up here or, you know, anywhere kind of like that above, but then your Pittman arm is way up here. So your steering angles, which I'll get into in a minute, this will be trying to push way down because this is a cross link now. Even though this is considered a drag link, that front to back motion is now going side to side. So it's similar to the motion of the tie rod. In reality, just about perfection is that wants to bolt at this height. Thusly putting the steering shaft right through the cross member. Not a big deal for a guy like me. <laughs> we still gotta make it happen. You're so silly. I mean, I got a drill. I could put a hole through that. Yeah, you do. The problem is all the old steering components are all crudded up. And because it's a two piece tie rod, 
we need a single piece tie rod, very similar to the Ford style Model A, etc. hot rod stuff. You have a tie rod that's straight through from steering eyelet, whatever you want to call it, from that to that. All right, a little theory. I'm gonna get my chalk and draw on the floor. We're gonna get into this. So, on the ground, let's just say you got your steering ouch. You got your steering ouch on this side, right? You got that hole there for the tie rod. You got that hole there for the tie rod, right? So we're gonna have a straight shot so that when they move back and forth, they're steering together. Can you dig it? Yes. But where this comes in, you can see that's the part that makes it all happen. Just like this was the part that made it all happen, right? Because this is straight. What I was describing was, say this was way up high, and you have this weird angle coming down, and there's nowhere for it to grab it, right? So what we're going to attempt to do is get this point of the pitman arm as close to this. So it'll never be a perfect world, but it'll be darn close. You know why? Because I saw a video about it. So this is here on the frame rail, right? Bolted in with the big old steering box. So this piece is gonna come down very similar to that. See the difference of the angle right there? Mm -hmm. So as they're doing this, they're doing this together. Still, there's nowhere for that to connect to. Let me show you the part. I'd like to thank Mr. Chris. This came off like an international scout or something. We measured it. He says, look at that. Darn near perfect. It's gonna have to get cut a little bit, but that'll work. The ends are pretty used up, but they're replaceable. I just got a direct replacement part. So this is mimicking this part, right? Then I'm gonna attempt to use these old parts. And that's what I was wrestling with on the bench there. I'm thinking if this end, see how it's got that piece right there where this other link can attach? Imagine if that end was right in there, then this would be free with some adjustment and nipping and tucking to go to the steering. Is that all that up to you? Yes, very much so. Wow, then I described it well. So I'm going to go over there back to the vise where I was starting and have a little wrestling match with this and see what we end up with because I need that to come off and see which way the threads are pitched. You know what the average consumer would say at this point? Why don't you just buy a whole brand new Jeep, Ian? Or... Or buy a new rod? I don't know. Close. Buy a new rod. End. A new rod end? Why don't you just buy the right rod end? Because then it wouldn't be a do-it-yourself show. You'd just be ordering parts in the catalog. Speaking of catalog, before Jamie does the montage of me trying to wrestle this into position, let's step over here. I'd like to thank Summit Racing for stepping in once again. We got dual circuit master cylinder. Thanks, Chris. He recommended that. Classic customizable Jeep CJ harness. Yeah, it's up there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll get your stereo bumping. And in this box, which has yet to be opened, it was a heavy one. What do we have here? I can't read it. <laughs> you don't have on your I don't have glasses on here. It's heavy. It's clanging. Ooh, I think I know what it is. Ooh. Land new Blake drums. And pads. I like brakes. I like brakes too. All right. So we got all four, two in a box, and hardware, springs, etc. That's groovy. Thank you, Summit. Heck yeah. If we can get just if we can just get this Jeep to go, it's definitely gonna stop. It's gonna work. If any of you have ever attempted this, you know what I'm about to encounter. See that it's spinning in the ways.
You know what some other folks would say? Buy a new one. Probably. But then what would we do for the next seven minutes of the video while you play a nice song? You might be careful. You might wake the spirits of the, the folk that make the drums. This wow. It's like my dad used to say when he called down to the basement. Ian, what the well, love? What are you doing down there? Taking apart tie rods, Dad. All right. Ooh, that's my that's my pump for today. Feeling good. Let's do that again. Would have prepped this sooner, but we had a date with the desert. Oh, look at that. That one's loose. Righteous. Sometimes you luck out. See, that's Chris for you. He's got all the good stuff. Looks crusty. Wait, we got the other thing from Chris as well. Either way, we got all the parts. <laughs> We're getting closer. Yeah. Question is, are these threads the same? Because I wasn't paying attention. But a lot of this stuff I've noticed, especially with the US based vehicles, a lot of them are the same. Whereas the VW stuff that I'm used to, all different shapes and sizes. I don't know, let's see if that screws in. If this screws in, make our world a whole lot easier. It's not gonna screw in. I can already see the threads patch, pitch the wrong way. Doesn't screw in. So, what would you do in this case? Re thread it? No. Hit it with a big hammer? Nope. Try the opposite side. Because oh. <laughs> you know what about a tie rod? You can use both sides. They're opposite threads. That way when you spin this, this one comes in and that one goes out or versa vice. Ah. So either way, when we do our alignment, that thing is nice and freed up. So we know it'll fit on that side. One to grow on. So what you're meant to do is twist this center like a turnbuckle. Mm, okay, and it expands sense. and... Tracks. It's kind of like a shower like tension rod. It's exactly the same concept, but it steers the Jeep. Not a shower. Nope, just like all the other good parts. This one is rusty. Let's see if we can't get it this way. You've joked about the busted knuckle garage, right? Get ready. Mm. Cool. All right, so that came undone. So this is just a clamp that holds it from spinning. So we know it's reverse thread, so if I spin it towards you, as if I was attempting to tighten it in standard form, look at that, it comes loose. All right. Really glad that this came apart. So would you say that our visit to King of the Hammers, I mean campers, um, got you, I mean you're already inspired with the Jeep, but... After I drove Mr. Such and Such the Bad, <laughs> So would that be Lil Lilibad? Lilibad. Lilibad. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lilibad. No relation to the other Lilibad. You may have seen driving a giant Jeep across Playa. This guy's <laughs> a totally different cat. I assure you. Oh, I was driving the stock Jeep. What was it, about 42, something like that? Yeah. Same vibe, but CJ2, I guess. Earlier chassis than this. And the only thing I could compare it to was the Model T Ford frame versus the Model A Ford frame. Ours is is uh, somewhat boxed. It's much thicker. It's just a stronger unit. Whereas uh, Ian's Jeep was very thin, very lightweight, but it drove like a dream. Oh, it did. We're driving our 2500 Chevy truck, heavy duty. That thing was a brick. All three inches of its suspension travel barely moved. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Jeep, the clutch, the way that it idled, when it's gear shifted, it was very, very uh, antique, but smooth. Mm -hmm. Smooth as all heck. Look at that. That just threaded right in there. Are we in luck or what? The Jeep gods are smiling upon us. Heck yes. All right. So now we have this tie rod, which I'll probably have to shorten. No biggie. And we have our uh, attachment for... So how Dragon. far do the threads go in? Because like you said, you have to cut it. Yeah, so I'm going to make this as narrow as possible. So just to say you have 
what does that look like, two inches on your threads? Yes. It, it's a good idea. You see how the rust is here? Mm -hmm. Take it in, because you want some adjustment. You know, once you want to do your alignment, this doubles because there's one of these on each side. So, you know, you're going to move it about that much. And you want a good grab for that clamp to hold it from spinning. So, yeah, a good amount. Yeah, and I'm no ASC certified special guy. Just doing it. Heck yes. So, I also read that someone said that they sell one of these that doesn't have that little angle in it. See how it's a little bit offset? Mm -hmm. So, for our application, our springs are 100% stock. We got no lift. We're not trying to articulate more. This will be fine. I'm sure of it. What that does is see this angle here? That just affects how much that can swing just a bit. Not a huge deal because we're going to be like this. Ah, yeah. That's Actually, we'll probably put it in the front. So we're yikes. Come on. Oh, I just always have to be like this. So we're gonna be. I'm gonna pinch my fingers before this day is done. Like that. So see, it affects this a bit. But you know what kind of guy I am. Full custom, man. I'll heat that up and <laughs> bend it over. And if it fails, we'll put a different one in. I'll tell you what, it's not going to fail on the road. It's going to fail going over some serious bumps at one mile an hour. So it's going to go click. I'm not confident. Yeah, it's going to have to be longer. But, shoot, we might have to do that. Because it's got to be facing down or up. I don't even know. Let's see which way those holes are tapered. Where's the nut for this? So many questions. Remember, I'm putting a nut right there. Noted. These are all the same thread. So there's our two. All right, let's see which way this contraption goes in from the top or the bottom. So just to see without messing around so hard with that. We're just, these holes are tapered. See, these holes are tapered. So this way, if the thread comes up nice and tall, and this way, I don't go in at all. That says it's got to come in from the bottom up. I'm really excited about this. So yeah, this steering shaft is way too long. It's gonna be our first point of development. Look at that. That's our big old full-size unit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get a tape measure, set this alignment up, get a good measurement. That looks pretty close. Cool. Get a tape. Now it's nice with new tires. You got all these reference points. See the lines on them? So you can measure right off of that. Just as a point of reference. I mean, there might be some camber or caster in these. Wait, hold up. I have a question. Yes. So those dots on the tires are measuring points? Well, they're part of the manufacturing process. But see the blue is a direct center line. That's where the mold is. That's the parting line in the mold, I bet. Ah. See there's a little ridge. Feel it? It's because they're brand new. You can still read all that. Older tire has these different tools that you can measure from the inside or outside. But for us, they're brand new. We're just looking for a rough guesstimation. I'm measuring 50 inches center to center. So let's see what it is on the front. And I'm saying the front because you want at about the center, because this, see, that'll change dramatically. So we're shooting for about 50 inches. That's 49. Forty-nine and a half. So we'll measure the back. Would you be a doll and just look at that? Because I can't see that side. When you want that right on the blue line. Which blue? The line? center. Back it up a little bit. You, you you can move it. Yeah. All right. So you want the silver thingy on the blue line? Yes. Okay, it's there. So that's a fifty. We're right there. 
real quick mock-up. We'll have an easy inch of adjustment in that tie rod. So measuring from hole to hole, which is what we're wanting on the steering knuckles. That's in the center. We want, can you see that? Mm -hmm. We want it about 41, give or take. That's quite a departure from what we have. Let's go to the measuring table for a racing application or any kind of thing where you'd be wanting to go for performance. Just get the right size tie rod. So what we're doing here to get this mocked up, this is going to work. We're going from 53, roughly 53 to 41. So that's a foot narrower. One, two, three, 10. 41 to 53, that's a foot narrower. Wow, that's a lot. Am I wrong? I'm fast, but sometimes I ain't right. Class. 53 and 41. It's 12 inches. That's a foot. I'm gonna mark off a quick foot on this. First, let's just draw a line that way. I don't know if this is indexed at all. I'm not sure, but just to say, this is our reference of how it was laid out, give or take. I'm gonna take a foot. I'm gonna take it right out of the middle. And we're gonna sleeve it and weld it. That's a foot. You know what I don't want to hear right now? How old your saw is? Huh? How old your saw is? No. We've already gone through that. How you really shouldn't cut a tie rod. You can do whatever you want. I like your style. These are hollow. See? They're hollow, see? Stick a solid rod in there. You drill through here, plug weld it, and weld it in the center. You're golden. I'm gonna get the grinder with a wire wheel and clean this up. Actually, let me put on the drill press and drill it first. I'm gonna do it one better than even the wire wheel. Then you luck, I have that piece of steel that fits that perfectly somewhere around the shop. Let's begin. Ta-da! So because it's a Jeep and it will be going off-road, I'm going to use as much of that as I can. That way you have a full insert in there should ever come under some stress. I like it. Talk about lucking out. Today is my day. Loose tie rods ends and piece of steel. All right, so we got our lines. Oop, I took off the lines, didn't I? Nope, I see one. I see two. There we are. Back in action. So I'm going to leave Leave a little space so I can weld that solid right there. I'm going to kick that just a little bit. That way I got that and that with a solid root gap to fill. Yeah. I'm going to put a little piece of steel across the top of that too. A little clamp. I'm just going to tense this up a little bit to make sure that this is not sagging by the weight of the world on each end. Oops. Let's put this out to here. Oops. Cool. 
Yeah, so I got this set like so. I'm just gonna check this, see if it's straight. Yeah, straight enough for government work. It's a joke somewhere with the you know cheap thing. Mm -hmm. Hit the and press the applause button now. Thank you. Cool. Let me get that welder. Now we'll see if we got a ground or not. You know how fun that is. Sure don't. Always a good time. Do a little quick cleanup on the end game, but we're here to fit this up and see how it works. You know what the one rule of today is? Don't touch the hot metal parts. Let's all remember that, shall we? As we put this through, try not to pinch my finger. Aha. There's one. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah, you can see the angle on that little uh, end is going to be quite dramatic. Let's see if we can get that to pop off with the hammer. It's already starting to look like I might have to uh, buy that proper piece. As you can see, it's going to hit the leaf springs. We might have to get a kit and bring this to the top side of that steering knuckle. Let me just take this away. Um, so this is interesting. This is really close to the leaf springs. I don't remember hearing anything about that. But as you tighten this up, it will raise. Let's see. So now that's enough clearance. That'll work. Let me tighten these up real quick and take a better look. No, that's good. Yeah, so that is. See the space there? That's oh, enough. wow. Yeah, there's a lot of space. That will flex a little bit, but not much. But look, now they're steering together. That is close, though. Look, that's not going to let us steer that way. We might have to move these to the top. So. definitely steering but that's hitting right here and we could swing this but this is still not going to give full steer no matter what now, even if this is lifted up all the way to here that's definitely not a full left hand turn or right hand turn or left hand turn or whatever turn it is it's hitting something. It's hitting this on the spring. Hmm. Did I ever tell you I was never one for homework? Yes, you did. 
This is why, because I like to do things my way. Look now. Now we're steering. That's definitely gonna hit that as we turn this one. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting. We're going to need a different link for that end. But we're steering. Hmm. So this has got to come all the way over to here. Set that box in place. I know we didn't get much done yet, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make the template for that steering box. Because no matter what happens here, this tie rod is going to be here. If we get a different end that maybe has a knuckle up above, or we flip it, I don't know, but we can definitely put the box in because we have a reference up straight across to these steering points. So let's just carry on as if this is the proper end. Set this box up on the table. All right, so with this steering box, to get this part started, I'm going to bring a piece of steel in and discuss the issues with this. This goes onto a stamped steel frame that has some contour to it. When you partner it up to a flat steel plate, right, we confronted that in a different project. So we're going to see how much we have to space this off. we we'll grab a couple large nuts, see what we got. Oh, so you have to make a plate underneath the pitman arm just so it has like a place to rest? Right, a place for it to mount, exactly. We we're talking about this, right? So I said, well, what if we got three lug nuts, mild steel, right? Use them as spacers. Hardware slides right through that. Right? They don't actually fasten to it. Those will weld to the plate. Right? And then, no more rock and roll. You can look through here. You see that little bit of space? Right? Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking, keep everything centered up. These are just tapered towards the end, right? A little bit. So I'll drill through the size of the hardware. And I'll countersink it a bit so those just snug up. See the taper against the surface there? I like snugs. Just snug it up. And how do we get a perfect template fit? Always the eternal question. We're going to thread these in from the back side. I think it's going to be tight. It's always tight in my life. Nothing's ever. What are you complaining about? Nothing. What are you running your stinking pie hole about? <laughs> I said it's always a tough time in this neighborhood. Oh, Lord. Guy cannot catch a break. You don't have any reference points to measure from. Use the old whatever it takes technique. In this case, it's running these threads. Dang it, it's going to hit that. I have to take that out. I was saying, a guy can't catch a break in this town. <laughs> I thought the Jeep gods were smiling upon us, but it seems the oh, no. winds of change have happened. Oh, no, we do with this every time. Try one thing, think it's going to work out great? Nope. Sure isn't. You got this, though. This takes five times longer than you expected. That is true. Let's see if we can take one of those out and cheat a little bit. Now we need 916. Maybe. Yeah. There it is. We don't want to lose that. See, what we're attempting to do here is get these threads to stick out so we get a reference of where the bolt has to go through when we make this template. All right, so we got one up. What we're going to do is we're going to run to the same problem. Let's see if I can find the smaller bolts that'll make this happen. I think they're 7 16 this looks like metric trouble to me. Sure is. But just remember, the greatest plans of mice and men 
Let's remember that. Do your research. You'll understand. So you see we're setting them in reversed so that the studs are sticking up. So a point of a reference. Or you can just go to the catalog and buy this part. True story. I'm going to redo everything we just did in a better fashion. Thing is, if you want to do this job full time, you have to do it the hard way. I saw our Amazon business bill from January. This is true. It's stuff's expensive. Like it is. I saw our business bill. We got we have a separate Amazon business account that we order with to keep track of all the things for the tax man. And uh, I never really realized how much you spend on parts. Let alone parts you weren't being compensated for otherwise. Well, exactly. Right. Or um, parts that you order outside of Amazon. You know what the good part about all these deliveries is? Plenty of template material. You're going to love this. Is that not a perfect template? How come you get to do all the fun stuff? Huh? How come you get to do all the fun stuff? Star. <laughs> Star here. Come on. Give me something. I'm the one who goes through the difficulties, too. Facts. Look at that. Perfect reference. You can find a direct center very easily on each of those holes. <laughs> Aha! Oh, wow. Yeah, I told you it was all going to add up to something entertaining. You didn't have your own television show for nothing, well, I see. You got to know how to hold a crowd's attention. <laughs> the suspense, the drama. But now, you may ask, what does all that add up to? I'm really asking that. Well, we're going to try to fit it onto a piece of steel in the most efficient way possible. Knowing that this is the top of the steering box. People wanted me to do more close-ups of you doing work. There's Ian. I don't like it like to get close to the work sometimes because I don't like to get close to these things. Well, Jeez. the sparks and all the things, but sparks no. coming off my fingers right now. I'm getting over my shyness. Hardware. All righty then. I put this back in place before we lose it. Check. All right. So now that we forgot which the way this all goes together, let's do a little catch up. It goes like this. All right. Right. This is the top, top. Top is bottom, bottom is top in this town. Wow. All right. So this is pretty thin for a steering box mount. So I have this. The question is, is that enough? Between that and that, look how close that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, you run it that way, look, it's perfect. That's the move right there. Okay, grind off these little bits. We got some leftover weld from another project. Take that off. What are you smiling about? I see you smiling. You're smirking. Thinking about a good Jim Carrey reference. A good who? A good Jim Carrey? Yes. We were watching him the other night. That was interesting. That's what I'm saying. And it's so weird because when you mentioned TV star, one thing he said was like... You mentioned TV star. I didn't mention TV star. Well, he That's said, you know, I wish great success and everything on anyone so that they could try it out and see it's not the answer. And I thought that was pretty profound. What I'm doing here is tracing on both sides of this. I'm looking at this hole that has to happen. And I'm going to slide it this way. I'm looking at that hole that has to happen, right? So it's just about, just about even. You got a good grab on both of those. So I'm going to say, let's just set this right there. I like it. I'm going to cut this off. So we can transfer this reference to the other side.
dramatic. <laughs> See that? Right? You see what I'm throwing down here? Perfection. Now I'm going to get a center punch because so many guys say he doesn't even use a center punch. Okay. In the center. Three punch holios. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the drill press. All right, I'm not sure if this is the right size drill for that hardware, but we'll just enlarge it now with a hand drill. The drill is in the basement of the camper. I was using that for the- uh, You called it the basement of the Yeah, it's in the downstairs. In the, downstairs. The, down, the downstairs. It's in the downstairs of the camper. I'll be right back. Take 17. Things take time. Those are the three T's, folks. Think you're gonna do it right the first time? You're a better person than me. All right, got the right size drill on there. It's gonna upsize that hole. Perfecto. Today with all the exciting noises. It's a really aggressively pitched drill bit. So seeing that had the holes in it already, it's just grabbing a small portion of steel. So that's why it's hanging up. That was the worst sound. It's like in my top 10 of worst sounds. Oh, feeling for my breathing. <laughs> in my top 10 worst sounds, that is right in the top 10. Well, you gotta expand your horizons. We just found number 11 of the top sounds you don't wanna listen to. You know my record with lining up holes. Think it's gonna work? I said, do you think it's gonna work? So far, I haven't had that great a success, even with my special template technique. Let's see. That's two, folks. <laughs> you can't find anything today. Hey, I've been on it's vacation. Because, right, we took a week off. It took a while to get back into the flow. Look at that. See, I'm not all, I'm not missing on everyone. We are there, locked in. So we still have that space as described. Mm -hmm. So now take a big old drill bit and countersink it to get those lug nuts to just set in there a bit. So not being dyslexic, we're going to flip it. We're going to save these so we know where they go. Put that there so we remember where it is. Now we're going to get the proper drill bit. Take this over there and compare. You can see my very organized array. The disciplined cabinet. Somewhere between the buffing wheel and the sander. <laughs> nope, that's definitely too big. That's definitely too small. It's like some Goldilocks stuff. That one is just right. Or should we use that? Option. I like this one. I mean, it just has a better shape to it. What would you call this if you just saw it on a shelf? A rocket um, piece. Step drill? Or a step drill. Yeah. Does look kind of like a rocket tip. <laughs> Builds rockets. Flames come out of it. I don't know. Yeah. Alright, let's put a little sauce on this. See what happens. You want to spin these on a low speed. So we're trying to move the material away, but not lose that original drill bit size from the other side, see? I'm gonna stop right there, this is not the appropriate tool. But it does give us a hint. I'm gonna step this in. Okay, we still got that grab right there. Mm. 
now I'm going to use that big drill bit. So what I'm getting at with this is I'll explain in a second. Uh, after I do this, it'll show a good example. Even though I'm using this giant bit, watch what happens. Wow. See? It's just creating a spot for that cone to set in. See, look, it just falls right into place. We want to set it down to that original bore size. See, still no slop in there. Now this sets right in there. And we can weld it. So we're not actually getting this to seat perfectly. We're just clearancing it so when we put that weld in there, it can grab. Sweet. You thought it was going to be all nuts and bolts, didn't you? Be a lot more action. We're welding. We're drilling. We're templating. Making wrong moves every minute of the way. So we know that this all fits up. But we don't want to weld this unless it's fixed to the piece. Because there is a little wiggle room in everything. So we're going to tack weld this while it's set to... The steering box. In a perfect world, I could tighten these down too, but I think I'm gonna, oh look, there was. Oh, I'll just simmer it up. I got a clamp for that job. Only something. I'll just clamp this down. That way it's totally fixed. And if you look here, almost no it's just about perfectly tight so it worked all my crazy ideas add up to something this time cool so what i'm getting at is now we can weld in right here so those spacers become part of the plate if i can get my clamp to stay that looks very professional well thanks you know i do get lucky on occasion Helmet. Yes, please. Uh, so we're going to want these welds to count. This is pretty thick steel. I am raising up that power. We're going to burn them hot without warping the plate. So we're putting some nice tack welds in place. You don't want to heat up this plate and turn it into a potato chip shape. Again, distributing the heat without overheating anything. That's pretty close. Um, for this part of the episode, our job is pretty much done. I gotta do a little research. I'm gonna show you how this thing will hang on the chassis rail here. You know, why we built this big plate. I did a bunch of cleanup here just because I know I'm gonna weld this plate to here and then do some trimming back. But let's see, now there's a nice big grab the box has plenty of potential to mount, and if you look at this, right, the original pivot line right here, it's pretty close to in line with this. Like, I might even slide this forward a little bit more. If you look at it from the top, so see the geometry we're dealing with? If you draw a straight line across, we're in the ballpark of that original pivot point, which works well with the original tie rod, height-wise, etc. So it's gonna force us to cut through here. But until I have that end link, I don't wanna continue. Um, I'm gonna clamp this on so we can just step back and take a look. We consider a couple other issues. 
It's unfortunate. I really thought we we're going to nail this in one sitting, but uh, now we can discuss. See this link. This link here is coming through. It's going to be extended about that much. And uh, when we're steering to the right, you'll see the whole system is moving towards this side, right? So when we're turning our steering wheel to the right, this is working with. That's pushing the whole thing in the right direction. So it's a good first step. I'm looking at the box here, looking at the inclination of this pitman arm. And I'm almost feeling like the box needs to rotate. Let's try putting this below that point. You see this link here? This is the geometry that goes to the steering, uh, old steering box assembly, etc. So, see this hole? It's either this hole or the lower one where the steering comes through. So you can see how this was pointing in that general area. We're going to want this one to do the same. So if I lower it, like that, that's a possibility too. Without having that other link to reference. You know, I actually think if you're looking at the chassis rail, and you're looking at this, I think below here looks even better to me. But uh, unfortunately, that can't be determined without having that proper end on there because it's just guesswork and it's going to steer so much nicer if we have this up on the jacks with no weight on it. We cycle it through with the steering arm and everything connected, and we can see does it look like it's binding? Is it going to pinch, etc.? But this is the layout. I got to do a little more research. We're getting close. Any questions? Nope, not a one. Thanks for the shirt, Corey.